Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Magic Mondays. Um, might need to re rename these from Motivation Mondays to Magic Mondays because it turns a normal day into a good day just to get that boost and that little added incentive, basically, an encouragement to keep going because we are in business for ourselves, not by ourselves, but solopreneurs tend to take a bit of strain from time to time. Um, if you're in an office situation, often you can get encouraged by your co-workers, but when you're working for yourself at home or working from home or from phone, as some people like to say, you don't always have that. So you need to be your own best cheerleader and get some encouragement. And this is the whole idea behind these meetings on a Monday, is to give yourself a kickstart, give yourself a boost, and it forces us or encourages us to listen to some motivation. We all know we're supposed to do it on a daily basis, but do we? And sometimes life gets the better of us. So we're going to listen to um, an interesting guest artist tonight, just encouraging us a little bit on taking action. Because as we know, if we want to do anything, if we want to grow our business, grow ourselves, we need to take action. Talking about it isn't going to do it. Doing it is. I just want to get rid of this and get rid of me. Don't discount yourself. I didn't do what I'm doing now for 14 years because I didn't believe being labeled educable, mentally retarded, failing in the fifth grade, put back to the fourth grade, and no college education that I can compete with people with PhDs and MBAs. Mm -hmm. And so for 14 years, a lot of people say they have no regrets. Biggest regret that I have, that I disapproved of myself for 14 years. And then, if it's a coincidence, it's God's way of staying anonymous. I went to a training and a guy was speaking. And Mike Williams had already said, hey, Brownie, you know why you go see Zig Ziglar and Dr. Robert Schuller and Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, who wrote The Power of Positive Thinking. I said, because I like the message. He said, no. He said, you like to help people. That's in you. You're always holding court here at the radio station. And you got a funny laugh, man. And so he just kept saying that to me. And and I was at an event, and a guy was speaking, and it just stopped like a spell came over him. He said, there's somebody here who should be doing this. He said, I do it because I make a lot of money. And he said, I love to make money. He said, but you, you want to change lives. And you can make money too, young man, young lady. And he said, you know who you are. And then he paused again. He said, the reason I'm standing up here holding this microphone and you are seated out there, I represent the thoughts you have rejected for yourself. That hit me right between the eyes. Mm -hmm. I began to cry. At that time, this is in 1980, I called Mike Williams. The telephone call was a dime. Mike, he said, yes. I said, I'm not rejecting myself anymore. Do you hear me? He said, Brownie, calm down. Listen to me, man. I'm not rejecting myself anymore. I said, will you help me? One of the things I teach, ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong and ask for help mm. and don't stop until you get it. I practice psychoneuroimmunology, your mindset, your diet, and positive relationships. Giving yourself a healing, nurturing environment strengthens your immune system and allows you to stay here longer and do your great work. Mm -hmm. One of the things I ask people when we're training, what's your strategy for being here? You have to have a game plan. Being here is not a given, and I don't think doctors should tell people that you're terminally ill. What I think they should say is my knowledge and ability to help you has terminated. Now you need to explore some other options. 
get some coaching from someone who's experienced, who's operated on the level that you want to go at. When I saw Mike Williams, who wrote the book, The Road to Your Best Stuff, he was a powerful speaker. And I loved his content and the naturalness of his personality. And he had fun. And so I said, I want to be like that. So I'm a combination of Mike Williams and Earl Nightingale, who was well read, uh, and Zig Ziglar, who had a lot of energy. And Jim Rowan has some profound quotes, uh, just a great thinker, a statesman. And so, and then, but I also trained to to be able to communicate. You know, like Dr. King was a great orator. Malcolm X was a great communicator. And so I integrate all of these. I believe if you love this, you will study the people that master it and you will evolve into creating your own voice with your own energy. I believe that if we multiply the voices of hope, messengers of hope that will provide a message of peace and a message of hope when there's hope in the future that gives you power in the present i believe that we can reduce the recidivism rate i believe that we can reduce the number of our young men and women that's in the military who are committing suicide on a regular basis i believe that we can begin to decrease crime and the violence that's taking place all across this country because Evil prevails when good men and women do nothing. Nothing happens until it's communicated. In the beginning was the word. And so my goal is to multiply the voices out here that will be bring some words that can help us to get a different vision of wow. ourselves. I encourage people to read at a minimum of 30 to 40 pages of something positive every day to program your mind. And, and all of us can do that. We can go to the library and check out books. When I think about Og Mandino, who wrote The Greatest Salesman in the World, he was on the verge of committing suicide. With the library, read the book Think and Grow Rich, and his life turned around. So reading and programming ourselves, the reason that, that most people should do that, psychologists say that that 80, 86% of our, our self-talk is negative, and it goes undetected by the conscious mind. That's why we're taught, be ye not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen to recordings and things that are positive. Go on YouTube and find things that, that will begin to empower you. And minimize the distractions in your life. We have so many distractions. The weapons of mass distractions cause most people not to begin to live their lives from the inside out, but from the outside in. You know, there's an African proverb that said, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. Shakespeare said, the fort of Brutus is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. So you have to program yourself or your mind will be programmed. The other thing is that have goals that's beyond your comfort zone, because in order to do something you've never done, You've got to become someone you've never been. You've got to become a risk taker. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you can't grow. And if you can't grow, you can't become your best. And if you can't become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? And the other thing is upgrade your relationship. You earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends. You've got to look at the people in your life and ask, what is this relationship doing to me? There are many people because of the toxic, negative, energy draining people in their lives. They will never be successful because those toxic relationships will compromise their power. There's a new term in psychology, in psychiatry called relational illness. There's some people that can make you sick. Now, some people might say, Les, can we change them? No, it's a full-time job, full job changing yourself. Don't ask what the meaning of life. Ask what is the meaning of your life. And to me, a man desires to live a meaningful life. So many young people young men today because we live in an entertainment driven culture that they they don't have a vision of themselves or what it takes to be a man i studied mr washington he was one figure that i looked at and how he held himself how he spoke how he dressed and i said i want to be like that when i become a man i i want to live my life in such a way that my mother would say I'm proud of Leslie, that my children would say, I'm proud of you. Somebody asked me the other day, what has been your greatest accomplishment? You've won all the top awards in speaking. You've spoken to over 80,000 people in the Georgia Dome, 30,000 in Poland. Uh, what, what has been your greatest accomplishment? I said, when my children got together and said, Daddy, when you're in pursuit of the dream and all those special occasions that you missed, we were angry with you. Mm -hmm. But when we see what you have accomplished, 
We've graduated from college with no student loans. When we see the sacrifice, the price of what it takes to make a dream happen, and how you started with so little, we're so proud of you. And we want you to know that. That, to me, was the greatest achievement that I've had. I spoke about three weeks ago in Detroit, and my youngest, uh, my second oldest son, Patrick, was with me. And he said, you know what? You're a special guy. You're a special guy for you to come in here and speak to these people and train. And they didn't pay you anything. And you spoke to them and gave them everything you had as if you had received a check. He said, you're a special guy. Mm. I admire you. When your children tell you they admire you, that to me is special. I wish I had not waited 14 years. Somebody said, if you want to lose something, mm. lose money. You can get that back. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. Walt Disney filed bankruptcy seven times. Uh -huh. But don't lose time. There were 14 years I sat on the sideline. 14 yeah. years I said, I don't have an investor in me like Tony Robbins. 14 years that said, I don't have an MBA or a PhD and, and I can't compete with these guys. I have the complexion of rejection. And so I regret that because there are some people that maybe if they'd heard my voice, they would not have turned to drugs. If they'd heard my voice, their lives would have taken a different direction. And I can't get those 14 years back. That haunts me. And maybe, I think that drives me when I speak with such energy. I'm, I'm trying to make up for that time. All right. Any comments before I turn the recording off? Uh, that's very good, Sean. Uh, sure, you mentioned something about getting some from Les Brown and from Zig Ziglar. So it's all a bit of flavor of different people, uh, a cross section. And like you have Great. got the podcast and, and you've got your own blend of wine that you can produce now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important. It's part of your story. So I think that's very important that, that we keep learning. But uh, it's a bit heavy to do 30 pages a day. Uh, <laughs> yes. I'm going to come down. <laughs> but start with three. It's the, the thing is, and that is where uh, Les Brown is, is dyslexic as far as I know. And you start with three pages. In fact, start with one page and go on. Louis Smith was dyslexic. Charlie Walton's dyslexic. But they both read books these days. And yeah. they're probably not reading 30, 40 pages at a time. But they've taken that step and they've mixed with the people that they want to be like. And that I feel mm. um, this has been a, a fascinating month for me so far. We're only, well, I say month, but it's been probably about two, two weeks, maybe three weeks that I've been doing an experiment. And I've been going on LinkedIn, which if you don't know LinkedIn, it's a, a bit like Facebook and Instagram and all these things. It's a, it's a social media platform but it's geared more for for business people business. and it's just a matter of stepping out and doing something every day i've been posting something on a daily basis for about the last three weeks and i've got over 1800 people that have interacted with me in the last three weeks. It's been mind-blowing. I've been talking to people in Canada, in Ireland, in Australia, in South Africa. 
And these are sharp people. Charlie always says, mix with sharp people. Mm -hmm. And I'm learning from them. And I'm also learning that every single one of them has been scared to take that step. We, personally, again, I'm a great talker. I, I, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do the next thing. But to actually physically step and do is a completely different thing. Now, I haven't progressed to doing any lives on Facebook or Instagram or any of these any of these things yet. But I'm learning. And watching the people who do do the lives, every single one has said the same thing. I was petrified to start. But somebody encouraged me and said, do it. And do it. We know my cheerleader down in the bottom left-hand side of my screen is infamous for her, just do it. So, yeah, what are we waiting for if we don't step out of our comfort zone and take that action? We are not going to get to where we want to be. I've got big dreams. And right now they're just dreams because I haven't taken the this, this stage to, to do the action. Jenny, please take over. I'm just going to answer this call quickly. Okay, yes. The, the dream chart, the action chart is all very well. I am also started a course on for online social and I've got the book that I'm working on tonight is Find Your Niche Planner. And if you don't, they also say, if you don't, do it. You know, you can write your niche. I've written niches here. And um, plan your thing, but then do it. Go and put it on LinkedIn. Go and put it on Facebook. I also do quite a lot of Facebook marketing, social um, on WhatsApp, uh, that other thing on, on WhatsApp. I do these things, and it's amazing how many people have seen it. And today I got another phone call as well. Somebody said you promoted this product. To please tell me more. I have breast cancer and we have a problem. So the more you talk to people, the more they'll come back to you. You don't talk to people with the idea of selling, selling, selling. We're not selling. We don't sell. We mm. share. If we can't sit back and say, oh, nobody wants our products and nobody talks to me and nobody, if we don't go out and actually share results, share testimonies, share about the product as Debbie did just now. We each, we each, we all use those products, but when last did any one of us tell the other one what we use aloe vera gel for? And tonight we learned a whole lot of new things to use aloe vera gel. And I bet you we each have been using aloe vera gel for many, many years. Yeah. Who knew that we could use it on our eyes when we're driving? Who knew right. that we could use it on people's, on babies' legs to influence the blood supply? Who knew about um, cancer spots, sunspots, that we can use aloe vera on that? Things that we should be sharing with each other all the time, and we're not. So um, we need to get out there, and as we always say, just do it, do it. And, and tell the people we there's only one male here now seeing that Sean's duck I'm us here. females I'm have here. the gift of the gab are you back us females have the gift of the gab and we can talk and that's all this business is about is TTP talking to people not selling to people not telling people talking to people that's what we must do okay Sean <laughs> all yours now <laughs> and that's important yeah correct and that's all that i've been doing just recently on linkedin is building those relationships i haven't mentioned once the word near life to anybody 
that'll come. The business will come. But all these guys who have got thousands of people that are following them and making big turnovers have all started the same way. Just building those relationships, getting to know people. It's like walking into a crowded uh, room. Think about walking into the convention hall. If it wasn't a near life event, would you go and tap people on the shoulder and say, hey, would you like to buy this? Would you like to join our business? Would you? No, you get to know them. You talk to <clears> them. <throat> and we're all humans. We're all probably looking for the same thing. It's just yeah. building those relationships one at a time. I've even now started, um, I posted my second one yesterday. Um, my newsletters that I did way back when for my our local free newspaper that also just started, I don't even know how, how it started. I think God got me to go to get into it. And that newspaper folded probably about five or six years ago already. I still have people. I met somebody at Parkrun a couple of weeks ago. He walked up to me and he said, you used to write articles in the newspaper. I went, excuse me? He said, I used to read those, those articles. What happened? I'd never met him in my life before. I'd never, I wouldn't even know that he'd read it. That was more than five years ago. And he oh. introduced himself to me. Nice. So, uh, well, there's something really important. In the very beginning, mm -hmm. uh, we, never, we never mentioned the products. Yes. Because although it was a good open ender it's and we could get there, um, uh, are you going? Are you still recording? Still Maybe recording. I'll, I'll, I'll check, check after. after you. Okay. Let me cut the recording.